All right, so we're asked what theorem 17.1 tells us about the, this error um, in regards to a triangular system being solved by back substitution. So let's see here with this type of problem. Let's see here. Let's just let's just start going through it. So what does this theorem say? It says that the algorithm for solving this system where r is triangular solving the system using back substitution is backward stable. Now by theorem 12.2 an algorithm f which you um, an algorithm where the input is a and the output is x which is a inverse times b where b is just some given vector. So basically what this function does is you plug in a and it solves ax equals b. This function has a condition number kappa of a which is given by norm of a times the norm of a inverse for whatever norm that you're using. Um, then by theorem 15.1, a backward stable algorithm, f, with input at x and output y, with condition number kappa of x, satisfies this equation. Um, yeah, this norm here is big O of kappa of x times machine epsilon. And we basically just tie all these theorems together and we get this result. So how do we get this? First of all, going from big O of kappa R times machine epsilon, this is just theorem 15.1 applied. Well, first of all, how do we get this kappa of R? This, well, I guess this kappa of R, um, we could replace this with the norm of R times the norm of R inverse. I guess we don't even really need that here. Um, see, that's another, okay, so yeah, that's what I was gonna say about this problem. It says, what does theorem 7.1 apply about, imply about the error of, uh, of this norm? That doesn't really tell us like what we're supposed to be looking for. And I feel like these types of problems are important because it's important for math students who want to do research to think about open-ended problems like this because these are the types of questions that you're going to be asking yourself as a researcher but it's I feel like these types of questions are always awkwardly placed into textbooks or at least most of the time awkwardly placed into textbooks because it's not entirely clear what the answer is supposed to be and the main issue is that like these are problems that we have to do for homework assignments so I want to make sure that I'm answering the question the way that's supposed to be answered and this problem statement gives me no indication of whether or not I'm doing that if a question asks me to prove or disprove something then I know when I've completed the the question and I can move on to the next problem. And those types of questions can help you improve your math skills and can help you be a better researcher. Um, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of these types of problems, but they're out there and they exist, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, I guess either you could replace this kappa r with this norm times this norm or you could just not even bring in theorem 12.2 in the first place. I don't know what they're looking for here. But anyways, this times this, you can use 12.2 to replace this kappa with this norm, or you could just go from here and write this equals this, and this is applying 15 point, this, this is applying 15.1. So theorem 17.1 says that the algorithm is backward stable. And since it's backward stable, theorem 15.1 applies to the algorithm. And so theorem 15.1 allows us to do this. And we're allowed to apply theorem 15.1 because theorem 17.1 tells us that the, that the conditions of theorem 15.1 hold. Okay, so what we're told here is that um, so if f is f is the algorithm that we're talking about in this problem, given a triangular matrix, we get x, which is r inverse times b. Then 
This is going to be F tilde of the output minus F of the output norm over the F of the output norm. If we think about like what are these things? Well, F tilde of R, that's just the, um, so F tilde is the approximation to the algorithm that we've sort of like implemented on a machine. And so that's going to give us an approximate solution X tilde. So F tilde of R is precisely X tilde, because remember F will map R to X. And so that's why here we have this minus F of R that will give us minus X, because X is the solution to Rx equals B. Um, and then of course on the bottom we get F of R is X. Okay, and so what we can do now is we just take this equation here and we multiply the norm of x over to the other side and then we end up with the difference between the norm of the difference between tilde x and x is the norm of x times big O of kappa r times machine epsilon. And I'm pretty sure that's what we want to know because this gives us an idea of um, the growth of the norm of the difference between these two. But anyways, we've given an answer to the question, and I think this is what they're asking for, and so we are now done with the exercise.